What's going on, everybody? You're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, as always. And in today's show, we're going to do a Giants Rumors Mailbag, which aired during our live show every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. So subscribe and have your notifications turned on so you can join us then. We like to party. We've been pounding shots all day. That's what we do. We win football games or try to win football games, and we party. But first question from Billy Smith. Not sure if you saw, but Josh Jacobs was touring MetLife Stadium. Could the Giants trade for him? Yes, I just saw it on Twitter. He posted a picture, and I'll get to it so I can get the exact wording. It was just, uh, he posted it on his Instagram, just a picture of MetLife Stadium. Trading for Josh Jacobs. So he's entering the last year of his contract. He wants a contract extension. No way, shape, or form are the Giants going to trade for a guy like Josh Jacobs when they have Saquon Barkley on this team who's already in the last year of his deal. Jacobs is a good runner. I like how he runs. He's a hard-nosed runner. He like he looks for contact. He's really good in between the tackles. He's shown some flashes of being a receiving back. But if I had to say my opinion and what I think is going to happen, he's going to play on the Raiders one more year, and then he'll enter free agency. So I don't think any team really wants to pay big bucks to a running back. But him being traded to the Giants, no can do, King Wasabi. Class clown, my brother. Should we sign Emmanuel Sanders? I'm all down for this. We've talked about it on the show before. I am in the camp of going and adding another wide receiver, especially one that's a veteran, that's proven in this league, and one that's played with Brian Dable and Joe Shane before. Sanders, as well as Cole Beasley, would be able to come over and, and show these young wide receivers what it takes to play in this system. And that means a lot, because when you're a rookie, like Wandale Robinson, or a second-year player like Kadarius Toney, and you're already on your second offensive coordinator, it's not the easiest thing in the world to pick up on a playbook, especially one as detailed as this one's going to be with a merge of Kafka and Dable. Sanders or Cole Beasley I think would be great fits for the Giants. They could be mentors. They could be shoulders to lean on for this young wide receiver group, and they're still ballers. They're not elite players anymore, but they're still solid football players. I'm all down with signing Emmanuel Sanders. Good question, class clown. Daniel Jones, eight. I saw the Giants could save $18 million in cap space with only an $8.3 million cap hit if they cut Leonard Williams after this season. Do you think they should do it? Great question. Good with the numbers, man. Um, If Leonard Williams struggles this year, kind of like he did back in 2019, where he only had half a sack, four tackles for loss, and 16 QB hits, then I'd be down to cut him. But if he goes and did, does what he did in 2018, 2020, or 2021, I would hold on to him. Yes, would it be a little bit of an overpay? Maybe. But I want to see that 2020 Leonard Williams back, where he had 11 and a half sacks, 16 tackles for loss, 30 QB hits. I like Leonard Williams. And I think he's going to make a big step this year in that Wink Martindale defense. For the first time, he's not going to be the exact focal point of every offensive coordinator's design to keep him out of the backfield. Because now, you got to deal with Zizo Jolari as well as Kayvon Thibodeau. And I'm expecting Dexter Lawrence to make another step this year. Look, it's up to Leonard Williams. If he plays great, this year the Giants are going to keep him. If he struggles, I could see the Giants cutting him and saving that $18 million. Because at the end of the day, that's a lot of money, and you can get a lot, you can get two, three really good football players for $18 million. But what would you do with Leonard Williams? Type K for keep, or you can go down and type C for cut. Juan, what up, Brody? Hopefully the Giants can get Patrick Mahomes. LOL. I know it will never happen. At least I have Madden. Well, if Ben McAdoo was able to do what he wanted to do in that draft when Patrick Mahomes was the quarterback, or when Patrick Mahomes was entering the NFL draft, the Giants would have selected him. McAdoo was in love with Patrick Mahomes. Would I love to see it? Yes. Is it going to happen? No, it's not. But great question, Juan. I appreciate you. Mark underscore P, what up, bro? Anyone else left in free agency you would get for a wideout? We talked about Emmanuel Sanders a couple of seconds ago. I'd be down with Cole Beasley as well. I would not kick the curb on a uh, kick the can, excuse me, on a guy like Antonio Brown. Julio Jones is still out there. There's still some good players out there. The Giants they did just sign Keelan Doss to a contract after they had him in for an uh, a tryout, excuse me, during Giants minicamp. A guy, if I were to guess, any receiver the Giants might sign at this point, 
to either Cole Beasley or Emmanuel Sanders and strictly due to the fact that they've played in this system before with Brian Dable. If you haven't yet, make sure you join the squad. Become one of us. One of us. Shout out to my producer, Matthew Peterson. But seriously, lock us in. Hit that big red button, youtube.com slash TV. I promise you, you will not regret subscribing to Giants Now by Chat Sports because we put out videos every single day. And with the NFL season inching closer and closer, our coverage is only going to heat up. So lock us in. Hit that big red button. Help us get to 10,000 subscribers. Cool guy Cam. What a name. Cool guy Cam. Do you think the Giants could draft Jackson Smith and Jigba? Dude is a baller. Yes, he is. Dude is one of the best college receivers I've seen in my time of watching college football. What he did in the pool was with, what was the game, Petey, where he had 350? The Rose Bowl, where he had 350 receiving yards against Utah. The guy put on an absolute clinic. And when you look at what he did in the 2021 season, he showed that he's going to be the number one receiver selected in the 2022 or 2023, excuse me. NFL draft, 95 grabs, 1,600 yards, 17 yards per catch, nine, uh, nine TD receptions. Everyone talked about Garrett Wilson. Everyone talked about Chris Olave. But Jackson Smith and Jigba is one of the most talented receivers to ever walk the halls at Ohio State. I like in Jigba, but at the end of the day, I think he goes in the top five or the top ten of the NFL draft. He'd go in round one guaranteed. And I don't know if the Giants are in a position to invest in a wide receiver in round one, unless Daniel Jones comes out and lights the world on fire and you give him a contract extension. Then you could go out, and I could see him going out and selecting Njigba in round one to pair with Jones. But if Jones struggles, I don't see Njigba being the pick. But I'll ask you this. I think this is a good question. Type D for draft if you would select Njigba in round one of the NFL draft next year. Or if you, go, if you don't think they should, you can go down and type P for pass. Jessica Lampert, what up? What cornerback? should we try to get if you're talking about free agency there's some guys i'm still interested in i'd be down for jimmy smith to be signed by the new york giants he spent a lot of time in baltimore he knows what it would look like to play in this wink martindale system he'd be able to help young guys like cordell flat like rodarius williams like aaron robinson i also like kevin king i know he's been roasted in the playoffs a few times but a 6-3 corner that runs a 4-4-40 and less than 30 years old i think deserves another chance i'd be down with either of those guys and honestly I don't think the Giants will go out and sign another corner, but I could see Jimmy Smith being a name that has a lot of intrigue for this Giants front office, especially the fact that he played with Wink, or played under Wink Martindale. Excuse me. If you haven't yet, go give us a follow over at Rumble, rumble.com slash NYGiantsTV. We're putting videos up on the channel over there every single day. And we're trying to get to 3,000 subscribers. So if you want another way to watch uncensored content from us over here at Giants Now, Go give us a follow, rumble.com slash TV. Jeremy Chuggs, hey, Marshy, how much faith do you have in Dable? I think for, a first, for the first time in a long time, I have faith in this head coach. I didn't believe in Pat Shermer. I didn't believe in Joe Judge. But I do believe in Brian Dable because he's done it at the highest level, not as a head coach, but he ran that offense like it was his own. McDermott, the coach for the Buffalo Bills, he controlled the defense. Dable controlled the offense. Dable has been in the most pressure-filled moments. The AFC Championship, game on the line, has to go and score. He's done that. He dialed up all the correct plays. Does it help having Josh Allen? 100%. But Dable is a guy that I believe in. I think he's going to be able to get a lot out of Daniel Jones. And if Daniel Jones doesn't show to be the guy, I trust him to groom and coach up the next guy to be the franchise QB of the Giants. Jeremy Chuggs, I appreciate you. That helmet is badass. I'd love to use it sometime, but I have a lot of faith in Dable to be the guy for the Giants and the head coach for a very long time. Another super chat, my guy Hixie Dust. Marshall, if you could trade for any player in the NFL, who would it be and why? Any player. It's, it's, yeah, it's Patrick Mahomes, in my opinion. I think Mahomes is still the best quarterback in the NFL, I know a lot of people want to lean on Josh Allen, but I've seen Mahomes get it done in the Super Bowl. When they were down double digits, he won them that game. He made every throw that he needed to do to win in the Super Bowl. I think Mahomes is the best quarterback. He's the youngest, and I think that he could put this Giants team on his back. A realistic trade target? Huh, that's a good question. What if, 
Yeah, what about going and getting another corner that's out there? Ronald Darby is a good name, but if I could have any corner in the NFL or a realistic one, I think Marcus Peters is a realistic trade candidate. You'd have to take on about 8 to $9 million in salary cap space, but he knows the defense. He knows Martindale, so maybe that would make some sense. But Mahomes, if I could have every, anybody in the NFL, it would be Patrick Mahomes. Good question, Hixie. Appreciate the super chat as well. That was really nice. Pimpin' ain't easy. What are you expecting from Kadarius Tony this season? A much better performance than I saw from his rookie season. We know he has all the talent in the world. All you have to do is go watch the Dallas Cowboys game when Mike Glennon was his quarterback and he had almost 200 receiving yards. Tony is one of the most electric players in the NFL. When he has the ball in his hands, he can make the unimaginable happen. He can make the first guy miss. He can get up the sideline. I want Tony this year to cement himself as the number one wide receiver for the New York football Giants. I don't think that's unrealistic. He was selected in the first round of the NFL draft. It's time to prove it. Play all 17 games. Show off the talent you have. Because I think this offense, where it's the blend of the Kafka and Dable offense, is the perfect type of offense and scheme for Tony to be successful. Last question in today's show. Senior Giants, did you see that Will Levis puts mayo in his coffee and eats bananas with the peels on? I don't care how good he is. We can't draft this kid. Yes, Will Levis is a corner quarterback in college. He plays for Kentucky right now. He's going to be a first-round pick, according to all the 2023 mocks. And he puts mayonnaise in his coffee. And he eats bananas with the banana peels on. I don't care how good this damn, how good this damn kid is at throwing the pigskin. If you put mayonnaise in your coffee, I can't trust you. And you probably shouldn't be allowed within 300 feet of a school. Mayonnaise? In coffee, I don't even like mayonnaise. And I damn sure wouldn't put it in my coffee. But hey, maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe it's something people do. I've never seen people put mayo in coffee. But I'll ask you this question. Do you put mayo in coffee? If you type yes or Y for yes, I'm judging you. And I am judging you. Type Y for yes or you can go down and type N for no.